if you are saying that you have a great love for your partner or your child or your animal, then the truth is your call, your, the truth of love is the call to healing, the call to the awareness, the seeing the pattern. It's always been like that. Oh, I'm right. sorry. Are we the victim of our own behavior? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The creator. You are the creator. So what are we trying to create and where is the root of that belief and myth that is misaligning you in this moment? I just, it took me a long time to figure this out. Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of the Sovereign Mind, Body and Soul podcast. And today I'm sharing with you a wonderful conversation with a wonderful person, dear friend of mine. Her name is Karina Krepp. Karina is a mother, author, wife, and holistic health practitioner to high-level executives and high achievers. In this episode, she shares with all of us what her life as a mother has taught her about various things that are all important lessons for her and probably the rest of us as well, including her battles with perfectionism and what led to her expectations and realizations about that perfectionism, self-parenting and why that's important and how self-coaching is also important, but sometimes you need some guidance. Sometimes you need some accountability in your life. And why is that important for all of us? Well, Karina's going to let you know. You're going to love it, and you might find particular value, I know I did, in the lessons that can be learned from your children as well as the child within you. All right, stick around, guys. You're going to love the episode. Pop some corn and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Sovereign Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with Coach Jerry. I'm your host, Coach Jerry. This is where I deliver to you the truth about pain-free health and joy as I know it from my heart and soul. I left my corporate 7-to-7 job to pursue holistic health and rehabilitation, a passion that stemmed from my personal struggles with obesity, misery, and disease. It was only after I surrendered my attachment to the medical system that I began to truly heal at the root. From arthritis and depression to autoimmunity, it all vanished when I put the doctors and pharmacists on the do not call list. The passion to share the truth as I know it about health was so strong that it left my six-figure corporate management job, and here I am with you today. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for tuning in. Karina, thank you so much for joining today. Jerry, thanks for having me on your special show. I really appreciate it. It's always wonderful spending time with you. Guys, For if you don't know, Karina and I have, have studied together and we've lived together for at least a couple of weeks, uh, sharing an Airbnb in, in, in California, along with a lot of other people, but um, noticed a very special connection with Karina. And uh, I think everybody who knows Karina says the same thing. She's just got this dynamic impact on people and just this energy and the, this transformative effect being around Karina is something you will never forget. And I'm just so honored to have you here. Thank you, Jerry. And I'll say the same back at you. I was just leaving you a little love note, a little, I left you a little video file love note. And one of the things that I just wanted to highlight about who you are is this courage that you have to transform and then own the transformation. I grew up, I'm a military brat. So I, every couple of years, I got to blank slate. Yeah. new group of friends, new, right? Which is a beautiful way of, to grow really quickly. But I would then discard, and I've actually had to reassimilate a lot of who I left behind over mm -hmm. the years. But what I've seen you do that has been heartening is that you have owned these previous versions of yourself publicly and as a doorway for all of us to be like, hey, Jerry looks like he's got it all together right now, but look, <laughs> You know what? That was a process for him too, right? So yeah. I just wanted to appreciate that because I think it's it's not encouraged in the glossy world in which we live. Yeah. And I think it's I would like to say that is one of the harshest things about social media because it carves us into these pockets of our belief systems. It reconfirms our myths and narratives. It's yeah. so for her. Oh, that's natural for him. Those are stories you're telling yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We're all human and everybody has certain hurdles, certain obstacles. And yeah, I will say that I think that my belief is that our souls came with certain progress points in this life, right? Yeah. So maybe you're a millionaire because that's not your issue in this life, right? Yeah. You're not supposed to understand value and relationship to self and the world. 
that's not your work. Maybe your work is relationships or whatever it is, right? So I just wanted to celebrate that because it opens the doorway to vulnerability. Yeah. See? posts where you're like owning, okay, I used to believe this, I used to do this, or I subconsciously had this habit and now I've converted it. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's uh, you use so many powerful words in there and vulnerability is one of them. And for those that don't know, I'm one of those that thinks vulnerability is weakness. I don't think, but it's like this deep seated belief and it's like, you can't be vulnerable to people take advantage of it. And then you'll be up the Creek without a paddle and no one's going to be there to guide you and blah, blah, blah. But that just speaks to, I think, one of the things that is just so powerful about you, Karina, and that is this divine feminine energy, this mother archetype within you. And it's just so evident in the way you speak and the way you show up for the world. And one of the powerful lessons that I've learned from you is the value of parenting ourselves. Mm. You do this in a very indirect way. You do this by example. And I think a lot of us don't understand that Part of the reason why we're here, one of the things we're, we're burdened with or tasked with is to parent ourselves and pick up where our parents left off. Just curious if what your take is on that concept. I thought as a young perfectionist, I thought that my son just had his birthday. He's 22. My older son is 22. And I sent him a photo of some oranges on his birthday. And I said, when you were in me, we ate a lot of these because in my perfectionist model of motherhood and as a pushback against my mother not being perfect, I was going to get it right. And so to that end, when I was pregnant, I had no caffeine, obviously no alcohol. That was easy, mm -hmm. but I mean, a no brainer, no sugars, except for from fruit which is why I was eating oranges. Like, honestly, I would like those little mandarin boxes I'd go through. <laughs> oh my, I was just, and anyone who's been pregnant, you're growing. I was voraciously, but I thought just as a, a snippet of, if I do this right, it will go well. If I do this wrong, that's it. My child will be messed up forever. Right. So all of that pressure of perfectionism, it certainly brought a lot of energy to my pregnancy and to how I gave birth and, and all of those events and, and the choices that I made because of the research that I did, because of the fears that I had, because, but it was all part of this story that the bottom of it was that if I do it perfectly, he, it turns out it was a him, I didn't know at the time, but he will be perfect. And, and he will have in Chinese, it's a shunli, a, a easy passage. Right. And that was my job was to make his passage easy and to, I never felt I'm going to be such a great guy. Cause I felt like, geez, what do I know? But I did feel very protective of the things that I had control over, but my beliefs at the time and, and had to change and grow with them as I ended up with two beautiful boys. And what I realized as I ran into my limitations as a parent, I had to fill in the gaps where my parents were unable to provide, right? They just, they were, this is the hard thing. And in your twenties, you're like, oh my God, they were not perfect. I am not perfect. This didn't go as well as it could have, right? On the look back. Yeah. And there's this anger of like, dude, like you left me here without understanding how to have deep emotional connections with other people. Come on. Yeah. You know? Where'd you keep? I know that you have kids. It's just, didn't you just run right into the places where your parents didn't do it? You didn't know you had to do that. And now you're in charge of these other people. If you don't bridge the gap, if you don't self parent, you will not be, all you'll be handing down is this generational trauma. Not that I didn't do that, but not that I didn't do that. I think that. that's part of our responsibility. <laughs> we gave us something to work on. I chew on this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> on your rep. It's Bye. a gift, you don't know it yet. It's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. This will be, this will form you, uh, but that, understanding that first I, I have a dear friend and he was like telling he tells this story about the first time he had he was a homeowner and a bat got in the house and he was like and i turned around and i realized i'm the adult where's the adult where's the adult yeah and i think i've had so many parenting moments like that where they'll ask a tough question or you'll be in a difficult situation and what is that 
Viktor Frankl statement about between the impulse and the reaction is a pause. And what mm. you do in that moment defines your character. Yes, yes. And that's the thing about parenting. That you're late for school. They forgot their lunch upstairs. You're, you're going to be late for your client. And suddenly they turn to you and they say, did God call you last night and tell you what I said? You got some options here. Mommy doesn't talk to God. Why did you forget your lunchbox? There's a hundred. And then to rewind now, to go back to those thousands of moments as a parent, right? Where my questions weren't answered as a child. This is that self-parenting thing. So that it's, I think, easier if you have kids or animals, because they'll push your buttons too, right? Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll yeah. offer opportunity for growth. But this yeah. opportunity as an adult at work as well, it's not just your kids that do this, but this opportunity to change what happens between the stimulus and your response. Yeah. So a different character, right? If you learned in your house, when I feel fear, I scream. How does that work out at the office? Correct. Correct. And that brings up a, a question that, that I'd been I've been pondering in my mind philosophically. And when we get in those moments, it's obviously we've got to parent others, but we've got to parent ourselves first, right? Or maybe it's more appropriate to say we should always be looking to parent ourselves if we want to be the best parents of others. But is it the adult or the child within us that delivers the parenting in those moments? I can honestly see they'll both ways. I think it can, because haven't you learned amazing things from small people? How did I not? That's the unjaded part, right? Yeah. How did I not? Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. Yeah. The perfect... I think it come, can come from both. And that's that creativity, that willingness to play with ourselves and to hear things from different parts of ourselves. And I spent, I think, a lot of time being very serious because I was so afraid of doing it wrong mm -hmm. and thinking that having structure and parameters and getting there on time and signing up for the right thing and those things, that was the essence of exceeding, right? And excelling at self-parenting too, right? Like what did I, how have I learned? What courses have I taken? When people ask me the a question, I should know all of the answers, right? right. That's what a parent does. A parent knows all the answers. Right. They know all the answers. Well, they have the how have you made up bullshit as a parent? Just yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. And we I got screwed because they can't, Google came around and we didn't have Google when I was growing up. My dad was like, for that time. Yeah. There was, you're like, really? Yeah. Right? Is yeah. That for me, it comes up as there's, it's those moments and that question that I literally have been tossing that around for a couple of months. And a similar question came up in a client session of mine and I didn't have the answer, right? We couldn't Google that shit. And so the best I could come up with is like, that's part of the dance of the healing journey of, like we mentioned the top of the show of being, being burdened or gifted with the unmet tasks of our parents per, I believe that was Carl Jung, right? That came up with that. Yeah. And so it's like, how do you know when you've healed? How do you know? And I think that those moments tell you a lot. It, it's like, do I defer to the unjaded, magical, mystical child within me? Or am I letting the wounded child run the show? Or am I the adult that's gone through that? Perhaps the wounded healer within that gets to guide these little people through life. And so for me, it's like a lot of that is like, oh, okay, this is part of the magic of it is we get to dance with this. We get to screw it up. We get to look forward to being imperfect. And I'm just curious what your take is along those lines is I know you do a lot with very successful men and as well as with mothers. And I'll tell you what I like about working with men is Terry, I love you. It's like I get these little windows to just provide you with just this love shine that you really are such an amazing human. And just think about how all of your vulnerability has helped other people. I'm impressed. That's all I want you to know. I'm impressed. I take my glasses off. My inner child was, I was, uh... Was saying some shit. Yeah, it was actually. He was laughing. He's like, "It's fun." <laughs> Are you gonna get mad? Are you gonna get mad? Okay. <laughs> huh? How about now? How about now? Yeah. How about now? So I did what I should have done before the start. I reset the router. Hopefully that helps. Oh, good. Let's okay. see. All right. So we're still recording. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. So, like I was saying, so a lot of times as parents, we're trying so hard to avoid more or less fucking our kids up, right? Um, oh. 
and we don't really understand that's part of the journey and, and it's really hard to understand in any given moment. But what do you see in your work with people, maybe mothers specifically, maybe in general, where the attempt to get things just right leaves little room for us to self-parent and self-nurture? Is that something, you know, so how does that play out? I think one of the things that I have realized over time is the people who end up working with me, co-creating with me, they are all attracted to something that I have to offer, obviously knowledge and lots of love and care and attention and, and things that maybe they didn't receive, right, in an appropriate level in their upbringing. But also, they, most of them have either some mother stuff to work on or mother stuff to work with. Right. So either it's an immediate trust because I'm a woman, because I'm a knowledgeable woman who's capable in the world in what I do. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they're with me and I've got a lot of these guys <laughs> because they would like to continue to argue their point with the divine uh -huh. and win. Right. Mm -hmm. And move male dominance or yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, it's like the silliest things. Right. It could yeah, be. Yeah. Right. Hydration, which I'm just like, why are we arguing? We, you can look this up. You right. can pull this. And I don't need to quantify this truth. It is a truth. Right. This negotiation, this but, what if, and how about, but my special circumstances. What they're really doing and what we're doing together is we're trying to heal. I need to prove that the feminine has as much weight and that the truth has a ring and a tone that cannot be denied. That's really one of the things that I've realized over my time is I've spent a lot of time in my life looking at the study and qualifying the knowledge. And now I just say to people, that's true. If you need to look that up to believe what you just felt inside of you, feel free, but I'm not going to waste my life anymore doing that for people. Like I did that for years. I would, I have like lists of backlogs of studies, this one for this one for that, to help people believe the truth. The truth is the truth. You hear it. I hear it. We hear it inside of ourselves and we go, God damn, that's true. Yeah. Not, maybe I don't like it, but when people are working with me, we've come to co-create. We really have come to co-create. They're here to teach me about who I am in that moment between stimulus and response. And I've got to say thank you so much to my clients because I've gotten better. Why? Because now I understand I don't need to be right. They already know what's true. Right. But we need to believe this dream that we both have agreed on, right? That I'm here to help you with your health, to get you to hear. Didn't we agree this is where you want to go? You're walking backwards when you argue with me. Yeah. Let's this way together. At least let's turn in that direction and walk toward that right? Add the extra water or don't. I, I can't control. So yeah. I think that what has really changed over the years is my understanding that everyone who comes to me is there for me as yeah. much as for themselves. And that I used to have this sense of, I need better clients. I need different clients. I need, this is just perfect. And as my knowledge levels up, the complexity of the problems that are presented to me level up. The self-parent part is that I begin to see looking down into the lake below, see more of my subconscious stuff. Yeah. I see the patterns. I see my reactions, right? Mm -hmm. That's where I see my story. That's powerful. And I got chills in, in, in what you were saying there because it, you mentioned the, the frequency of truth it just resonates and they hit right in my heart particularly when you talked about they're here to teach us is we're there to teach them and i've often said to a lot of my clients it's like gosh sometimes i feel bad that you're paying me because we're both getting so much out of this and ultimately like you said you start attracting different clientele um, more challenging cases deeper cases and it just seems to be that's what we attract and so that i guess is a reflection of how we're showing up and so I was wondering if you might be able to talk to the audience about how these kinds of realizations, even if it's a discussion over hydration, but how that can affect how you show up 
to the world and maybe how the people that you're working with and the people around them are showing up to the world? I think what the knowledge has shifted in me and the first time that you hear that calculation of your weight divided in half ounces per day. Okay? Yeah. So simple. And many times have I repeated that to the same client over and over because mm -hmm. it's not that they don't know it. They didn't remember it. It could Teflon because you think, well, Karina has that knowledge and she will safeguard that for me, which mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. But that means that twice a week, you can check back in with that knowledge, but you haven't adulted. You forgot to adult. Yeah. So would you call that like transferring of knowledge or safekeeping of the knowledge? Yeah. Yeah, Karina holds the knowledge and I can check back in with her for how it is, how we cycle. And it, we see this pretty clearly with diet stuff, right? Oh, it's the holidays. And so people just explode themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And it's like, but it's the holidays. Okay. I just think, listen, if I'm facing myself in my family of origin with my nuclear family, I want to be on my A game. I'm not going to explode my gut because that makes me irritable. It changes my sleep cycles. It changes. And I'm not as able. It's an alcoholic coming to the holidays and just hitting it blackout drinking every day. It doesn't help the situation. Mm -hmm. You know that things are going to go way worse and you probably won't even remember half of what happened. Right. The, this notion of adulting is owning the knowledge. Now that doesn't mean that we don't need it repeated. We're just human, right? Yeah. And we can only absorb so much in a day. And I work mostly with male CEOs, right? Heads of fortune 500 companies. What they absorb in a day is huge, but yeah. where they have an easy sponge is definitely in the stocks. Right. Where I just, they, what they're, it's almost like they're blocked to the health stuff. And mm -hmm. I, in my former coaching would just, every time I saw them reiterate and reiterate, and I would progress them anyway. Yeah. What I learned as I realized that wasn't working. Now, these are clients I've been with for decades. Why wasn't I helping them progress? I knew every, I like had taken every course. What was, it was me. It was my coaching. What was I supposed to learn is I was supposed to learn to parent them. Yeah. Yeah. To be like, I'm sorry. You said that you were going to hit this marker of hydration four days in a row between the time. I, and you did not. So I refuse to have the conversation with you again until you just do the basics. And then wait a second. But I thought you were going to be the owner of my, I am the safekeeper of the knowledge of health, you are the adult who must implement the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Me every Tuesday. Now how, remind me again, how am I supposed, yeah. what is it again? Like the, the ball jar I gave you for the holidays last year, three of those, please. That's just that simple. Three yeah. of these. I gave you the measuring cup. Yes. Now you need to adult. And I have, I say that with a lot of compassion, being a little glib, but with a lot of compassion, because for me, there have been sticky things where I'm just, I didn't like the change. And I was, when I was a vegetarian, you would have been hard pressed to get me to eat meat because it was a dogmatic belief about being a good person in the world and doing no harm, right? This notion yeah. that I can't kill other animals to survive. But honestly, Jerry, when I dug into that belief for myself, and I'm, this was, I, it was 19 years. So it's just, this wasn't like a flash in the pan. It was 19 right. years I lived there. But what happened when I dug into that for real, because my son was struggling with growth. He was having a hard time growing. You know why? Because he wasn't getting enough protein. You're being cruel to the most important animals in your life. <laughs> so, right. So what are, what is my value system? Yeah. All before I, all before we, the yeah. I, we all system, it's me first, put yeah. my mask on, feed myself. I have the energy to be in charge of the we, which is my dream team, my family, my, my crew. And then the all, which is every, and I love the all as well, but I had put the all in front of the I and in front of the we, and my son was suffering. And that's what made me change 19 yeah. years as a vegetarian. To finally, we had a family meeting and we we're just like, what are we going to do about this? Are we willing to try? My son 
He's so sweet. He's like seven years old or yeah, seven or eight years old. He said, mommy, I won't eat the babies. I said, okay, sweetie, we'll have no babies. We'll have <laughs> ducklings. He didn't want to eat the lambs. No yeah. feet. I was like, I'm with you on that. Let's just keep that. So what, what really makes us change is when we see, oh, I had clients say to me, they'll, they end up, one of my clients had a major eye ocular issue and it was dramatic. It ended up at the hospital and basically the bottom line was they were dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. And so when they came back and saw, I said, so is that now the thing that's going to make you change? Like, why didn't you tell me? I was like, what do you mean? Why didn't I tell you? Yeah. This is yeah. what we've been taught. I didn't know that it was like my eyes. Yes. So until it is, it confronts us in a close way, we tend not to make the change. So having the knowledge, no, but having a community that repeatedly owns and lives the knowledge mm -hmm. will move the needle because yeah. the thing that I want more than anything, Jerry, is to be among, we are tribal. Yes. So the most powerful thing that your listeners have is you. And because you are who you are and you're living in these ways and they're getting reintroduced to these notions over and over, they are beginning to, Jerry said something about drinking this stuff in the morning before coffee. Guess I'll give water a try. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, who are you sitting across from? Who's in your circle? What are you feeding yourself in your ears? in your eyes what are you what is what are you consuming not just with diet but with the diet of the media yeah and if you turn off the news and turn on the truth now you're going to be an agent of change faster than anything because we all want to be included in the tribe and when the tribe when the whole tribe is eating doritos then you're going to eat doritos yeah and that brings up a powerful point. Uh, you know, here in America, it's odd to show up to a barbecue <clears throat> knowing that they're going to be serving hot dogs and potato salad and brownies and whatever. It's it's odd for us to show up maybe with a, a fresh cut of, of grass-fed beef and maybe a, a vegetable platter that we can share with other people. But it's like if you lived in a blue zone, it would be odd to show up to lunch with a bag of Doritos and a hot dog and a plate Rude. of potato salad. Rude. Right? Yeah, like, oh, so brought this process nonsense. Yeah, so what is the tribe us? doing? Yeah, yeah, and are you trying to kill us? Exactly, exactly. So the, the the ability to be separate within your tribe based on what you value and what's good for you is a big sign of adulting, and yeah. maybe to a bigger point of individuating ourselves as adults, separating from that child mindset that need to belong, but to belong in a certain way. And I've often said that it's either pain or love that can separate us from our ambivalence and because we can be ambivalent as long as we want Jerry, it hurts, I like that. Say it it again. hurts enough or we love enough to be able to make that change and i'm just curious what your take is on how our value system maybe our attachments and our beliefs tie into our willingness to stay ambivalent to truth here's the thing that i have figured out for myself is that this awareness, this clarity of adulting, right? Continuing to learn and to be exposed to new ideas and, oh, wow, is it possible that, that wasn't true? This thing that I believed and this other thing was actually happening. Is that possible? And that division there opens up the potential for really owning I loved what you said about individuation because it's it can seem like a lonely game. It can seem like you're the only guy with the grass fed. But I'll tell you, at my, we have eight little houses and we barbecue together for holidays. We're just a little complex. <laughs> now it's been two years. Everybody knows. They're like, well, Karina is not going to eat the gluten stuff. Don't bring desserts because she always brings fruit. Yeah, so everybody knows. And you know what? What's that? They started to change their habits too. And so this whole thing of be the orange in the apple cart, you have a different resilience mm. You'll look different than everyone else. If there's an apple blight, you're going to be fine. And 
all the apples are going to turn to you and say, how are you staying so healthy? Yes, yes. Well, that's this beautiful skin that I wear that has all of this hydration, right? So be the apple in the orange cart. You look different. People will always point that out to you. And it makes people a little bit nervous. But I'll tell you, one of my, two of my neighbors came over the other night and it was a weekend night. And so we just, they came over to ask my husband some questions about lighting. And just as a hostess, I said, what can I offer you to drink? And I gave the list. I have these nice probiotic refreshers. My husband was like, I have all brown alcohols, whatever. And the wife said, we just love some water. And I said, oh, how fun. Would you like water with sea salt? Would you like water with electrolytes in it? Would you like filtered water? And she was just right. Cause I'm like, oh, this is my jam. I, yeah, get, yeah. I have hydrogen water. Would you like to try that? It's amazing. It bubbles. It's, and she, I did overwhelm her. She did. She took one sip of the hydrogen water and was like, thank you. But it's culty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but here's the thing, Jerry, right now, what she understands now about coming over to my house because she used to bring a Diet Coke because that's her source of liquid. Yeah. That's, she's one of those people, always has one in her hand. And I said to her last time, I was like, oh, don't bring that garbage in my house. I have good things here. <laughs> like joking, but not really. Yeah. So she felt like I really created a boundary of please don't bring that garbage in my house. I yeah. really don't have it here. I don't offer it because it's not good for you. Yeah. So I won't give it to you because I love you. Yeah. And so I love the, I love you, everybody just thinks about what you would bring to a barbecue and what that says about now, not everyone can afford a slab of grass fed beef, but you could probably do better than a hot dog. Yeah. Right. Even if it was just like, if you made your own sauerkraut, right. What does that cost? $3. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. And how are we holding each other up in support of trying to be our best selves, right? Correct. Correct. If there are cupcakes at, and this guy's a sugar addict, what's he going to do? He's going to eat the cupcakes. Yeah, of course he is. Of course he is. And he's going to think it's okay. Office, could we just normalize people? Please don't bring donuts to your office. Something there. It's like bringing alcohol to an alcoholic. There is someone there with a real sugar issue. If you put that down, it's over for them. Yep. And you're not helping them. Yep. I remember a few years ago when my kids were, it was like their elementary school graduation. And I think it was fifth grade. I think fifth grade is the top elementary school here. And I remember showing up to that thing and there was like a plate of donuts. And then there was a plate of candy bars. And then there was a plate of potato chips. And then there was a plate of, um, or a big bowl of punch. And it's like, you start seeing, this is what happens when they're in high school. This is what happens when they're adults. This is what's normal in this country. And to your point about being the orange in the apple cart, this brings up a, a memory of one of our one of our mutual friends, Alyssa, sent me this video, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, but they're at this they're at this concert, and this concert is on this grass hill, and someone's playing music, but nobody's dancing. One guy goes out and starts dancing, and dancing very poorly, I might add. How I would dance if I was out there. Would it? Fast forward three, four minutes later in the video, and you get to see how many people were just wanting to dance. And there, when we get in a, in a tribal setting or a group setting, every group needs a leader, at least one. Yeah. And, and so many people are just afraid to assume that leadership role. And that leadership role might look like the guy that you said is addicted to sugar. Maybe he's diabetic. Maybe he's okay. taken some medications and he's been told by a coach or a doctor or both, you probably shouldn't do this. And he shows up to that barbecue wishing there wasn't cupcakes there. If there was a leader there that showed up with a plate of real meat, real yeah. vegetables, real fruit, then this guy has an option. Yeah. Or he says no, and he takes the suboptimal choices anyway. But either way, he's experienced the love. Yeah. And maybe the triggering pain that allowed him to confront his current ambivalence about his situation and the current truth of the matter. So what have you seen? You deal with leaders. What have you seen with leaders and their ability to take the information that you give them and become better leaders in their lives and within their organizations. Here's the hard thing I think about being a leader is that there is an overload of decision making. Yeah. So what I really have learned is small drips, attainable tasks, 
and repetition. And it's not a lack of desire, certainly not a lack of intelligence. It really is a bandwidth issue. Yeah. And so what has happened for me and my work over the years is that they have the finances to just hire me more frequently so that I am their recall. It's all cyclical. So the, the cycle comes faster because Karina's back, right? And I'm asking what you did yesterday. Remember we said yesterday was going to be your day for your yoga nidra. How'd that go? Oh, you didn't do it. Okay. That was your homework. So let's get a, let's do a yoga nidra now. So now, and the, and what has, what really, and used to get frustrated, like oh, you didn't even do it. It's, we just have capacities. We just do. And my piece of the pie, as I am constantly reminding my beautiful clients is the foundation of everything else you want in your life. If you are not healthy or when you are in pain physically, you can't think about anything else about your life. You can't build that new business. You can't be at that board meeting. You can't think about anything except for the pain in your ass. Yeah, if literally. I've really, it took me a long time. I was, I, I was a very young, I was, used to be a cheerleader, really. I actually was a cheerleader, ice, ice hockey cheerleader. I was a rock. Okay, hey, you didn't do it. Oh, that's okay. Let's try again tomorrow. Oh, wow, you didn't do it. Now I'm like, you didn't do it. We're going to do it. Let's go. Yeah. That's how I had to self-parent myself, where I was taught as a woman, right, to just continue to cheer on the men in your life. And don't ask mm. because they're busy professionals. Yeah. But truth is that they come to me because they want me to create the boundary they yeah. want right and that's where my work is and that took me god bless it. i have clients who were with me back they do say that they preferred that <laughs> remember yeah. you used yeah. to i'm like yeah. oh i really hope you enjoyed those years because they're over yeah yep yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like eventually we snap out of child mode and we're like oh if nothing yeah. changes nothing's gonna change and this really is painful to keep living life this way I can do this. I can do this. That's a powerful realization for an individual, isn't it? And also that at any stage in your life, what you haven't healed is being expressed. And so if you are saying that you have a great love for your partner or your child or your animal, then the truth is your call, your, the truth of love is the call to healing. The call to the awareness, the seeing the pattern, the, I don't, I'll hear, I don't know why that's all, it's just always been like that. Oh, I'm right. sorry. Are we the victim of our own behavior? No. Yeah. 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 The creator. You are the creator. So what are we trying to create and where is the root of that belief and myth that is misaligning you in this moment? I just, it took me a long time to figure this out, but also and that at any time, it doesn't have to happen before. Like I really, the reason it took me a while to want to have kids is I thought I better get perfect. I've got to yeah. have the apartment, I've got to have the job, the stability, this much money in the bank. My body has to be in shape. All of those things, I wanted it all aligned. I still messed up as a parent at any point along the way. Right now, today, I call them light switch moments. You can have a light switch moment and you can say, and now. I choose to be better in this way, in this specific thing, not all of the ways I can't do it all, but today I'm going to hydrate. I'm, I'm just going to start with that. Yeah. But I'll tell you, Jerry, the thing that really changed me is having this higher purpose, right? My son couldn't grow. That's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. The story is my mother-in-law, she was, she kept going to the doctor. She was, there was something obviously wrong. And I just kept saying, believe your body. They kept for years, they kept saying, there's nothing wrong. We don't see anything. There's nothing wrong. We don't see anything until finally they said, wow, you have Huntington's disease, it's a fatal disease and you're dying. And oh, by the way, it's genetic. Yeah. So now here's my husband. Maybe he has it. And here are my two children. Maybe they have it. Right. So this is a hard moment in my life because I am the guide for this team. And we now have three big unknowns that change the thinking, which changes the trajectory of everybody in the group. 
And so we had a lot of conversations, my husband and I privately, does he want to find out? Do you, if you have a 50, 50 chance of dying a pretty horrible death, unless you get hit by a bus, do you want to know that? And how does that benefit you? That was always my question. How is this going to change? What are you going to change about your life? If we know one way or the other, we mm -hmm. already have our kids. Now for my sister-in-law was different. She didn't have kids yet. So we already have our kids. You have it. Maybe they have it. Maybe it doesn't matter. What is is yeah. right? Knowing is not going to change that. However, taking action, I felt just my proto that's just what I do. What could we learn about this? How could we move this needle? So this is what happened. We were sitting around the dinner table and my younger son had just read this book about Kilimanjaro. And he said, well, we could raise money and hike Kilimanjaro. Okay. What else can we do? So I know how to ride a bike so we could raise money for research and we could ride our bikes from New York city to Toronto. So we did that. The four of us did that. We did Kilimanjaro. We did New York to, we did a hundred miles on the Connecticut river. We did, we called it pump for the cure. We did accumulated squats, push-ups, and pull-ups for 366 days. Cause wouldn't you know, it was a leap year. So yeah, of course. squats, pull-ups, and push-ups. What was I teaching them? That even in the face of something fatal, even in the face of something over which you have no control, you, this bigger dream of being a part of a community that puts energy in solutions, right? That we donated for research, right? We, yeah. Every year we raised ten thousand dollars and we did an action and we donated for research and that was how i taught my kids to deal with this great unknown my older son he had a real existential crisis like mm -hmm. what does it matter i'm gonna be probably have it 50 50 chance roll the dice really the action doing something greater than himself for grandma but for yeah. the community for the future for the people who have it already who for sure are battling it. That is what changed them and mm. created this sense of in community, in stress, in community, in that we take action, we do things to make things better. And I think that what I know about that from being the guide and there are so many stories from these adventures that we had <laughs> planned by Karina. Uh -huh. <laughs> We've got family stories for years, but that what I really wanted to impart to them is there's always something you can do, right? Doesn't yeah. matter if it's fatal. Doesn't matter if you have it. What are you going to do? Those that's the epigenetics. What switches are you switching on and off? If you're eating Doritos, you're flipping those switches on faster. Yeah. If you're opting for apples and oranges, those things are staying tamped down. Right. So that's where your power is for everything. Yeah. Yes. That's the dream bit, right? That's, that's the awesome. purpose. Yes. What do you advise people that have a hard time? Maybe it's their values alignment. Maybe they're tying all their worth into financial success and providing that way. What are some things that you can advise people that maybe have a different belief system, but still need to tie into something bigger, something more powerful than just the things that they currently believe. Listen, if you're tied into finances are God, right? Money is God. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of power there. You don't need to change that at all. You just need to divert. Money is simply energy. Mm -hmm. That's an energy exchange. When I get paid for my work, I'm saying the value of my work is this. And you're saying, I'm giving you this energy exchange and here it is in your bank account. And so yeah. now the value of my person has elevated, right? Yeah. And we could talk about the socioeconomy of all of that, but the truth in our, how society is set up and what money means, right? Which is this weird, right? Cause we were here when Bitcoin wasn't a thing. Yeah. So it is a construct of a communal belief that, right? That just, just yeah. blows my mind. The money exchanged is really a value exchange. If that's where you vibe, God bless you. I have questions because I'm just not there. And most of my clients are very helpful because this is not where I live. And they're like, Karina, you have to do it this way. And you're doing this wrong. And super, thank you so much. This, cause that I don't, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. Honestly, because in this life, money has just flowed to me. 
and mm -hmm. that hasn't been one of my hurdles yeah. and i don't need a lot of it as also yeah. the thing is I, I don't need the show but if that's where you vibe then all you need to do is take the value that you have in pentacles money coin and shift that energy to a communal benefit mm. i'm a big fan of food banks yeah because if you can't if you don't eat you can't think you have no stability right, right. if you didn't eat dinner last night and you show up for school this morning and you have the school lunch which is garbage mostly i just this is a commentary on the american public school system but it's processed food it's pretty not great and so there were kids in my school i live in chinatown in new york city lots of kids in my school where the only meals they were eating were school lunches but yeah. go please fund your local food bank there's a huge food bank here just a local chinese company that just puts together and there's a line around that there are hungry people where you live is what i'm trying to say put your money there that you how much energy you get back when you give that out you don't have to change you know you don't have to ride your bike yeah <laughs> you don't have to create these that was more so that my kids were doing something right like otherwise in the building right, go take care of the goldfish for free for the neighbor who's going to be out of town that's yeah. a value added to the community right you don't have to have a thing we all have energy and some people have don't have time so then please give money but yeah. if you all you have if you have time then go read books to little kids at the library there is a place for you with the knowledge that you have and there's a reason you woke up this morning there's a reason you're still here and it's because you have value to add back to self to your tight dream team and to all of us mm. and the more you realize that self is benefited by connecting to the we and the all the easier it is to take good care of yourself one of my clients she has a very hard time very hard time she is dysregulated in her sleep in her food in her and she just got a puppy and now she's making changes for this yeah. little tiny puppy <clears throat> right as i said to her listen you're going to be dead and who's going to take care of that dog that's the trajectory we're on here. You better lift it up. Let's go. Yeah. So I think that what I love about you is that you understand how to reach out into the community just with your <laughs> Jerry truth, right? <laughs> that is a public service, right? Because you have this knowledge and you were so generous with how you share it. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it wasn't possible until tying into, to your point, to something bigger than yourself. And I think a powerful realization for anybody is once we realize we're going through life trying to figure out what do I get out of this with any value exchange, what do I get out of this? And when we can f see the other side of that coin, which might be, how can I serve? How can I serve? How can I deliver? What is it that, that this person next to me or this group or the world could use with what little I have to offer? It's just such this enriching process. But think about your gifts, Jerry. And in my belief system, the reason those were the gifts that you were granted is because that's where you're supposed to give back. That's yeah. how you serve. Yeah. That's why those things came so easy. That's why people forget to value the things. My clients who are just great at finance are like, you have to do this and this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, let me get my pen right there. I have no idea. For them, it's just Debbie It's just, that's, of course you do that. Everybody knows that. No, not everybody knows it. It's right. just, that's your gift. Yeah. And those things that came easy and have been with you the whole time in your life, that's what you're meant to offer in service of self, small community, larger community. Yeah, that's powerful. One of the, one of the most powerful realizations that I can ever hope to deliver to anybody is that, that notion of the gift and to the point we mentioned earlier, we don't realize what our gift is. And a lot of times we're scared of our gift, aren't we? We resist the gift, we resist sharing the gift, we resist acknowledging that is our gift. And for me, at least, it's a powerful realization that, that gift is for you to share, not to hoard. <laughs> what can you do with it? What can you do with it? Instead of saying, this is my gift, but I don't wanna share it with you. No, I noticed you got a gift. Can you give me some of yours? What, what do you got there? What, what, what you need extra? 
Yeah, that's the scarcity model, right? Well, I've only got so much of this. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, yeah. The gifts, that's, that just flows and it grows. There's nothing else. It's just, it's like bamboo. It's got forest. <laughs> yeah. So you can't help it. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Spends 10 years under the ground and then it just shoots up like a, yeah, like a bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Speaking bamboo. of gifts, you just contributed another gift to the world. You just recently got a book out got a book out. Yeah. Um, Tell us about that. Yeah. Our friend, our mutual friend, Heather Cardiff. She's awesome, by the way. Who's awesome. She and yeah. I got together over COVID and we just, here's the thing. Here's the thing about having been in the billionaire circle for year, decades. That's where I've lived. In that, in the cocoon of that, I have had the opportunity to learn so much from them, for them, from mm -hmm. and for, because they get a new hip, I better figure that out. But I am, I have directly affected, let's say under 50 lives, mm. right? Yeah. And what really bothered me about that, Jerry, as you can hear my all community thing, is that the knowledge that I have wasn't coming out into the world enough. And, and a lot of people cannot afford me. It's just the bottom line truth. Yeah. Yeah. So. What Heather and I decided, we wrote a workbook. It's got 24 chapters, 24 topics. And that even if you just buy the book, which is very inexpensive for the digital version, every week do the topic and the challenges at the end of the chapter, you are now adulting yourself. You are making progress to look down in the lake and to see what's below the surface for you because there hasn't been a structure where we can progress ourselves. We're just busy, right? Yeah. People are busy. I'm also a yoga instructor. And <clears throat> this, for anyone who has a regular yoga practice, most studios will have a focus of the month, which is really what led me to this understanding that if we keep bringing back up to the top of our minds, as we integrate our breath with our body, as we begin to look into ourselves and to see what is the common denominator here, right? That yeah. guy who me off or how fast I was driving. Yeah. <laughs> and where do you have control? We have no control over him. He's going to be that whatever, but me, I can change the foot on the pedal. I can change the intention of the drive. I could leave a little earlier. These are things I can control. So this notion that one week at a time, having a topical top of your mind, who am I when I think about my legacy, right? And mm -hmm. who spends time thinking about their legacy unless someone's dying? But if you have the bandwidth to just focus on that one thing, do those exercises, or Heather and I have a group where we go through this with everyone for the greater purpose of supporting mothers, because both Heather and I are mothers, and that's a hard time. And it's this time when both of us had the sense well, we're supposed to just do this on our own. And actually Heather was a single mother for a piece of time for her kids, which, you know, oh. I just, I'm in awe of single yeah. mothers. So in support of them making progress, the book is for everyone. The book is for anyone. The book is a legacy piece for me, for my children, because my boys are at the age where, yeah, mom and her, stuff that she puts in her water and her advice for when I have the sniffles and all of that stuff. They're at the individuation phase where they must be autonomous and they have to find their own way. And they're going to go and take those antibiotics because that's what the doctor said. That's what they're supposed to do right now. Yeah. They're going to circle back. Yeah. And if I'm not here, my book will be here for them or for my grandchildren. And this is one of those books that is full of truths stuff that my grandma taught me that I also was like, Oof, well, Emma, I, like that. I got this right in yeah. modern times. And now she's gone. And I'm like, I, how come I didn't listen Yeah. So to have these legacy? One of the beautiful things about the knowledge that I've gathered is to have this legacy of ability. So the community part, we love just gathering once a week with the mothers and supporting them in this process, but also anyone can have access that's the this is the internet this is why the collective unconscious is at your fingertips it's not for porn 
what? I know. <laughs> it's and bubbles. It but it's is, free. This is here because this the truths are waiting and ready for you when you decide to self-parent, when you decide that I have this greater purpose and I'm going to stop messing around. Yeah. Right? I'm going What's to stop. What's your call? Called the way holistic and okay. that's on instagram is the way holistic we're also uh, i'm on instagram as chakra holistic listen it's all out here keep listening to jerry keep being in community with people who are telling the truth keep questioning the truth yes i think that's yes. hard but be the orange i think is yeah. the bottom line yep know your truth individuate know who you are and where your beliefs came from and then they, you can stand authentically knowing that because there's no, there's never anything bad that comes from standing in your authentic self. Even if the lesson that you learned was that I was wrong, I was wrong. How the hell would you know that if you didn't stand in your authentic self in that moment? Yeah. If you didn't have the courage to say, this is what feels right, given what I know about the world. Yeah. And then to be willing to later be like, yeah, I could see why I thought that because, you know, this was my underlying belief. Yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, and actually Paul Check, who was one of our, it's our great teacher. He was the one who triggered me. This is how, you know, you're outside, you're on, you're outside your values. I was at a lecture and Paul said to me, anyone who, who's, who in here is a vegetarian? And I raised my hand high in the very back. And he's like, all of you, have disrupted your cognitive abilities. I was like, <laughs> me, whole, yeah. I da da and a da 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 and a da da da. And you know what? He was right. Yeah. And that anger that I felt, where he stepped over my boundary. You know what? This is the six finger check, right? If somebody on the internet says, says Karina has six fingers," I'm not angry. Right. I know I have six fingers. Right. 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 Or as someone says to me vegetarianism is not serving your health and I get angry. What's going on here? Yeah. 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 Why am I triggered? There's a shadow there somewhere. That's yeah. right. So Karina, I can't thank you enough for being my guest today and, and, and sharing time and space with me. I will definitely make sure that uh, your links for your book, your community, where to find you on social media at Chakra Holistic on Instagram is where you're going to get all this, all these knowledge bombs daily from Karina. I know I have. And uh, we'll make sure that's available for our audience, but I can't thank you enough for making time for me today and anyone else that's fortunate enough to listen to this broadcast. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share with everybody? I'd like to share that anyone who's listening to this broadcast is lucky to have found Jerry. Oh gosh. Keep finding the truth, finding the truth. That's it. I love you. Karina. I love you.